Welcome back to part two of my affectionate look at the drumming on the great album Café Bleu by the Style Council. So after the pop jazz of Dropping Bombs on the White House, we arrive at a style of music that the Style Council made some inroads into which were not always that popular. Um, with this particular track, A Gospel, um, we delved into the world of rap and possibly not the best uh, idea, but it was fun. And I have to say the lyrics on this particular track are excellent. Uh, Dizzy Heights did a great job. He was the rapper that was on the tune and he joined us on the Red Wedge tour a couple of years later. Um, and it was just great to do something a little bit different. All credit to Pete Wilson, uh, the producer, because one minute he's kind of recording sort of bebop. And the next minute he's got his trusty Lin drum out and he's programming kind of bass drum parts. And I'm playing go-go inspired sort of drum fills on the top. Now that's the sort of feel on the drums that I tried to sort of emulate. Um, I was quite into bands like Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers and the Junkyard Gang. And they would have like rotor toms and cowbells and, and all sorts of like um, quite, quite uh, funky sounds. And the fills would always be quite sort of uh, quite triplet based. And, and that's what I kind of emulated. I mean, this is sort of typical That relentless uh, triplet inspired uh, go-go beat from, uh, from Washington DC. So there was a little element of that in the fills and I was using um, the, the, the Simmons kit at the time and, and moving gradually to, to uh, playing a full kit on, on, our, on our favourite shop which um, uh, I was really really glad to do because those Simmons kits were, were quite unforgiving. Um, so I decided to do like a little fill, to try a little fill and going into the song and it should have just been really like a triplet fill and then playing the hi-hat and, and the fills over the top but being me and being sort of a bit sort of confident I tried to double up the tempo of the fill so it starts off with this and bear it in mind these Simmons drums Simmons drums are actually like tabletops to play so um, I did sort of set myself quite a challenge and they were quite hard on the wrist so it was one two So that was the rhythm that was being played and I was playing the top kit and all those kind of go-go inspired uh, um, patterns on the top on the Simmons with the, with the big fill. You have to practice that one to get it right. So if a gospel never appeared in the live set, the next tune certainly did, Strength of Your Nature. Another very eclectic kind of tune. I'm not sure what the influences were. Uh, there's a little bit of electronica and with the vocals, a bit of a nod to the sort of um, music that bands like Parliament Funkadelic, Defunct were making in the late 70s and early 80s and we covered a couple of tunes. We covered Razor's Edge by Defunct and we also covered One Nation Under a Groove by um, Parliament Funkadelic and so we, you know, we were, I've always been a fan of that kind of music so this has got a little bit of a nod to that but again with the Lindrum, um, the, the, the intro that starts off on, on the record is a Lindrum. And then the band kind of come in over the top of that, which is, uh, you know, quite a sort of a stark sort of entry. The thing that I played over the top of it, um, on top of the Lindrum, was like a hi-hat pattern that was based on a 16th note groove and sounded a little bit like this. Now, the bass drum pattern was um, from the drum machine and a little bit more com complicated and driving. And it sounded um, like this when I put it with the hi-hat.
So where did I get that influence? Um, I've always been a big fan of uh, first Joy Division and then New Order. And I absolutely loved when I first heard um, uh, Love Will Tear Us Apart by Joy Division. I loved the drumming of, of Stephen Morris and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. He had a really driving kind of hi-hat sort of um, technique um, when he was playing like quite fast 16th notes on, on the hi-hat. And I loved his drumming. I loved all the hybrid stuff that he did from um, going from uh, Joy Division into New Order. He's an uh, absolutely brilliant drummer. So thank you, Stephen, for the influence um, on this particular track, which probably some of you might find a little bit surprising. So the bass drum comes in. We used to do that song as a uh, medley with um, internationalists and Strength of Your Nature. And at some point we used to do it with the song Soul Deep and Strength of Your Nature. Um, a great message in the tune, it's all kind of positive. So that was a really, really nice tune to play, uh, especially live. Now the next tune um, can best be described as, as a classic, it really, really is. Um, at that time, there was a lot of criticism that there were no real singles and there was no kind of um, hits on the album That when it first came out. And then just towards the end of the record, um, Paul inserts You're the Best Thing, which to me is one of the most beautiful ballads that's ever been written. And I think it's so important for drummers when you're kind of shredding and, and sort of really getting insular into your um, playing to not forget the importance of playing on ballads. Now, the drumming... There's absolutely nothing to write home on this record in terms of technique. All I'm kind of playing at the intro is something really like this. So nothing really to write home about in terms of technique and flash and, and whizzing around the drum kit. But to me, playing on ballads has been one of the most uh, beautiful musical lessons that I've had. And I've had the opportunity to play on some wonderful ones from Paris Match to Long Hot Summer to You're the Best Thing, You Do Something To Me. Um, my contribution as always, um, just trying to maintain a musical input to playing on these songs and less is more. Don't ever forget that. And drummers, drummers, don't ever knock the importance of the ballad. I've had numerous occasions when people have come up to me, obviously 35 odd years later, and said that we got married to this tune or, you know, or my, we had this when my, my parents' um, 50th wedding anniversary or something like that. And, and those kind of things are really, really lovely and, and they really connect you as a musician with people. So don't knock the ballads. The next song I absolutely love. It featured um, on violin uh, the great Bobby Valentino, who um, we did a few things in the studio with at the time, and he was very good looking, I'm sure he still is. Had the look of Clark Gable about him, so uh, really, uh, you know, great guy, but a great player, the most important thing. So Bobby does all of the um, fantastic sort of violin playing on Here's One That Got Away. So the drumming on that has a kind of a council-esque sort of theme running through it because it's very similar to the drumming on Speak Like a Child. Now I don't know whether it was Zeke or Paul who came up with the idea, Zeke Manjika who was the drummer with Orange Juice who played on some of the uh, early hits for the council. I know he played definitely on Speak Like a Child and he came up with something that I thought was really really good 
as a drummer. Now Zeke is originally from Zimbabwe and obviously via Glasgow um, and I'm not sure what Zeke's up to but if he's out there and he's watching this I'm just sending you lots of love mate. Zeke came on to play with um, the Paul Weller movement and play percussion and did backing vocals I'm sure some of you will remember. I thought he had quite an African feel on the hi-hat. Instead of playing it as a, a kind of a, a normal shuffle which is essentially the bass drum and, uh, uh, and, and snare drum part for Speak Like a Child, what he actually did was very clever. He played it as a triplet. With the little cymbal pushes, which I thought created a really, really nice riff on that particular tune. I loved that tune. It was a real joy to play that when we, when we did it live. Um, so I took that influence and I just thought I'll try that kind of thing that Zeke did on, um, on Speak Like a Child. And I just took the tempo up, it's a little bit faster, and I put some of my little um, inflections from the hi-hat and around the kit and came up with this drum part. So a few of those kind of like little inflections that I, I like to do and essentially it was a slightly speeded up version of Speak Like a Child. So this was really, you know, the, 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 the songs were really cooking on the second half of the record and then we come along to possibly, um, definitely in my top five of, of Style Council tunes, um, the magnificent head start for happiness. Um, a, a modern soul classic in my opinion and Everything that encapsulates what I thought was great about the council, the fact that Mick would uh, do the first verse and then Paul would do a verse and then Dee would come in with a, a brilliant sort of spoken word bit into her verse and the brass and, and, and the kind of just the swing. And I used to absolutely love playing this one live. Um, and we used to kind of take the tempo up a little bit and it used to be a real uh, storming tune in the live set. So originally it first saw the light of day as an acoustic song, um, but we kind of took that on and, and, and recreated it as a band version. And Paul just started off with a really, really simple guitar line, which I'm sure you're all really, really familiar. And I came in with some little accents and some clangs on my bell cymbal here, my Zildjian Earthride, which is the original cymbal. And it kind of sounded a little bit like this. The, the basic rhythm was a shuffle and I'd heard that influence on a song called Lido Shuffle by Boz Skaggs with the awesome Jeff Picaro playing drums. His pattern was a little bit more quarter note bass but with some really nice ghost notes in the snare drum. Great, great drumming, and Jeff was an absolute sort of master at, at, at many styles of drumming, but especially at shuffles. So I kind of took a little bit of that, but I added in more of a conventional shuffle feel on, on the hi-hat and, and the ride cymbal. So instead of playing it as quarter notes, I then added some of those little tasty Jeff inspired uh, ghost notes in the left hand. When Paul started it, a one, two, three, four, one.
And I'm kind of singing along in my head as I go. And, and it was just a magnificent song to get to play on. So that's a little insight into the uh, second half of the record. Um, there was one more track to go, and I couldn't think of playing anything more simpler than a little tribute to the kind of Motown drummers of, uh, of Detroit. And it, the programming was from the Lindrum, which Pete or Paul had done, um, like a tambourine sort of inspired part. But the drumming was pure sort of Motown inspired, and that's the kind of drumming that I really, really love. Just simple four on the floor. Another little instrumental to finish things off, and um, it went something like this. For me, you will never get a better dance rhythm than that. Just simple four on the floor. And I take my hat off to all of the influences and all of the musicians um, on this fantastic album. It was a real, um, an eye opener for a lot of people. And, uh, and I'm loving the fact that people are rediscovering this music. Maybe it was a little bit of ahead of its time. It was certainly brave and it was certainly really inspirational to play. So thank you for joining me on this little journey. And I will hopefully, in the appreciation of the documentary coming out, I will um, look at other albums and probably our favourite shop will be next. So thank you very, very much and I will see you very soon. All the best.